Bar Barco Liqueur, a podcast network. What is up, everybody? Uh, thank you for checking out the uh, Pat Out of Hell podcast. I am your host, Patrick Christopher. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for supporting. Uh, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and start out. Uh, I don't have any shows coming up. Uh, so just uh, check on the uh, the Twitter, the Instagram, the uh, OnlyFans, the TikTok. Uh, all that's at your homie Pat or uh, babacoacord.com and uh yeah we'll just we'll just jump into it man uh i'm recording during the day usually i like to chill during the day and then do a little recording a little podcast recording at night uh but uh scheduling and, and all that whatnot i was like i'll just put it up. so i had to put up anyway it doesn't matter it, it took me more to set up than i would have liked uh but uh but here we are it's uh the pad of the hell uh podcast uh let me put my glasses so i feel more intelligent yes i don't have any lenses on them uh but i will get into that in a little bit uh twitter and instagram uh all that good stuff at your homie pat uh dot com. uh yeah i'm gonna take these off uh the okay i'll just jump into it i'll just jump into it Sometimes being a Karen, you, you get you, Karen's got a Karen when it's time to Karen. All right, so uh, I'll just jump into it. Uh, my eye lab messed up my glasses. I like these frames; they're the Ray Ban frames. Nothing special, you know. I just like the way they 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 on my face. I like the way they 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 fit my my whole aesthetic, you know. It really fit my whole aesthetic, and I'm really bad at picking glasses. I've gotten stuck with frames that I don't like, that don't fit me, that don't fit my style, don't fit my vibe. You know, that's me trying to be, uh, you know, something something not, that I'm not or whatever, or just something in my budget or something that I ordered online and I, ne- I didn't like check to see if it fit the frame, my round face, my big old baby ball face or whatever but i finally found i found the frames that i liked i was like these are going to be my forever frames these are going to be the things that my ride or die till the day i die whatever you know so i went to my my eye mart my eye lab my eye lab let me get it right because i'm going to destroy it not destroy them but uh anyway I went to them. I asked, "Can you can you put my new prescriptions in my frames? I like these frames. Uh, I don't like the 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 lenses that I have on them now. They're scratchy and the film was bubbling up on them. Where I got them done didn't do them right. But I like the frames. I like the frames, right? So I'm like, can you just? Is it possible to just fix, put my new prescription, uh, in this thing? And they're like, yeah." yeah we do that all the time not a problem uh cool so i had to get my eyes checked had to get all that stuff and i still good my eyes are still good not a big difference uh diet with diabetes and all that stuff you usually when you get diagnosed with diabetes it really messes up your vision and uh hasn't hasn't affected me that much uh so uh cheers to that um so anyway so they needed to put my new frames in there. I was like, "Cool, you could do this. Let's do this. I want, I want this frame, you know, whatever." And I, so I paid like two hundred bucks, like two eighteen something. And uh, about like two weeks later, two weeks later, I get a call from their general manager. And uh, she's like, hey, uh, we damaged your frames, so we just need you to come in and uh, pick pick new frames. I was like, are you are you serious, dude? Are you serious? Of course. Of course, the frames that I want, the frames that I found that are supposed to be my forever frames, 
Um, and yes, I understand there's more like those, but this this one's mine. These are mine. I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. Right? You you get it. You know what I'm talking about. It fucking fits. That's my vibe. That's who I am. I got no fucking. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna like. I think these are gonna be. These are my podcast glasses now. You know, so there's no. I mean, you can still see the reflections on the. Okay, whatever. We're gonna. We're not doing this. Um. So I was like, fine, dude, whatever. Uh, finally made time to go in there. I went in last Saturday. I went in last Saturday. I was like, look, I don't want to do business with y'all. Just give me my money back, and I'll go somewhere else. I'll go find. I'll go rebuy these Ray-Ban fr- frames uh, for somebody who has Ray-Bans. She's like, well, we don't really do that. You signed a paper saying that you agreed. Um, you knew the risk going in there i was like i did not know the risk i was like when you you gave me the papers and you said i had to sign it and i was like i don't want to sign it she's like it's just a formulary thing you know it's very rare that glasses get damaged um and if they do we'll replace them i was like i i I don't want them to be damaged i don't want them to be replaced i want these frames she's like we do this all the time it's fine so i signed it you know whatever and uh in the bottom, it says like you know, you know, refunds, we'll replace whatever. You know, so fine. I don't read everything I sign, dude. Nobody reads everything they sign. All right, I don't read. Yes, I wear glasses. No, I don't read. I write. I sign. I don't read. Either way, so I was like, cool. Well, I don't want to do. Bit, I don't want any of your frames. I don't want any of your frames. I want my frames. I want in my. I want the lenses in my frames. But y'all can't do this, and I don't want new glasses from y'all. I don't want to do business with y'all. Um, just give me a refund. She's like, I can't. We can't do that. I was like, but you don't have my frames. You don't have the frames that I want. And I came here and I asked you if you could replace them. And uh, you know, y'all have all these cheap frames. And she's like, well, we've done. We've done more expensive frames before. We've done Gucci. We've done Michael Kors. We replace lenses all the time. I was like, okay, but y'all damaged mine. So how about you just give me my money back? And she's like, uh, can't do that. I was like, let me talk to somebody else. Let me talk to anybody else. She's like, well, it's just my assistant manager. I'm the general manager. There's nobody else here. Uh, and I was like, okay, what are you going to do? She's like, I'll make a call. I'll make a call, uh, but they're closed today, and uh, I'll get back to you either Monday or Tuesday. So I like, cool. All right. Thanks for nothing. You suck. You're a miserable person. Uh, I hate you. I don't know you, but I don't like you. So anyway, I was fucking steaming, dude. I was like, you don't fucking rip me off. You fucking don't be fucking condescending. I don't care if they're not Gucci. I know they're just Ray Bans, but they're my Ray Bans. I don't want any of your fucking cheap shit get the fuck out of here blah so uh Monday came by no call Tuesday came by no call I was like this fucking bitch so I went to uh I put a, a, a review on on the Facebook I don't do reviews I don't do reviews but now I'm, I'm just gonna dude you gotta do it you gotta you have a voice you gotta use it so uh did a facebook review or check in i guess it wasn't really a review i just checked into the place and said like you know if you're looking to get uh pay two hundred dollars to have somebody damage your frames and be condescending and apathetic to your towards you uh check out my eye lab at city base in san antonio texas uh as for crystal and uh you know got a got a couple of uh, teehees Got a couple of uh, laughs uh, on the face on the Facebook, and then um, went to Google because first they made me while I was in the store. They made me. They watched over me while to, while before I did uh, to do a review. She the and it wasn't the manager. It's not all her fault, but another staff member. She was like, so if you could leave a five star review on Google, whatever, whatever. I was like, cool, cool. She's like, uh, you could do it now, uh, you know, if you want. I was like, okay, right now, cool, all right. This isn't awkward at all. 
So I just I put a five star. I just type in great, and then I press select. She's like, cool, thank you. I like, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. You, you made it weird. You know, you forced me to do it. What was I gonna say? No, no, thank you. I mean, I could have said no, thank you. I guess. So um, after this happened, I took down that review. I took back my five stars. I redacted it. Redacted the five stars. And then uh, it would not la let me leave another review. I wanted to immediately write another review. Anyway, um, so uh, a couple a couple days later, went back on Google, wrote another review. Pretty much just copy and paste to what I put on Facebook. You know, I don't have time to write a whole thing. But I was just like, man, like no call, no nothing, no say, hey, like, hey, sir, by the way, uh, go 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 screw yourself. Uh, I'm giving you nothing. You get nothing. Uh, so anyway, so um, left that and then got a stupid like, we apologize. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. This will help us serve our customers better in the future. I was like, cool. Well, what does that do for me now? What does that do for me now? Absolutely nothing. So I was like, all right, I need new glasses. I'm 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 SOL. I paid two hundred dollars. I have no glasses. I was like, let me go back. Let me go to a different. Let me go to a different my eye lab, and just tell them the situation. And see if they could help me out. And give me some new frames. So I went to a different location. And they're like, and they were very helpful. Both of them. They had nothing else to do. There was nobody else in the building. So they went and they just kept like looking uh, to see if the frames that they, the lenses that they sent with my damaged frames, if any of those lenses will fit in any glasses. They were very, being very diligent, you know. Unfortunately, n none of the lenses uh, fit in their frames, and they're like, because this is from a different store. If we had it in stock, we would we would totally like just give you new glasses from here. And there you go. But uh, because this is an open order from a different store, even though we're the same name, we're different, different inventory, different all that stuff. I was like, so what do I have to do? So like, you can either call customer service, see if they'll figure it out for you, or you could go back to that store. And I was like, I don't want to go back to that store. I don't want to deal with that manager. She is a miserable B, C, A, J. She's all that. She's a jerk. Uh, and they're like, I get it, sir. I get it. She sounds horrible. But uh, since you went to that store first, or since you went to that store, rather, you have to get it done from there. I was like, fine. Or just call customer service and let them deal with it. I was like, that's uh, that's not getting me nothing. That's getting me nothing. Thank you for your help. Uh, you were very helpful. And uh, she's like, yeah, just come to us next time. I was like, okay, okay. I'm never coming back to this company ever again. So, um and not because of them; they were very helpful. It's just I don't want to—I don't want to deal with my eye lab uh, ever again after this. So uh, went back, and I was like, I was getting ready. I was like, this I, this bitch better not fucking look at me wrong, give me any type of attitude. I ain't the one, not today. And so I was like, I was rock walking in. I was walking in all stern and shit. And this other guy's like, "Hey, sir, how you doing? Can I help? be be right with you?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, you will." And uh, I just kept looking. I was like, "I don't see her here. Maybe she's off today. Maybe I don't have to deal with her." Cool. That's good. And then uh, finally got 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 the guy's time, and he's like, "I explained the situation." He's like, "Okay." You can pick out any frames, and then we'll make the we'll make the lenses for you. It's like cool, man. And I'm so bad. I went by myself. Usually, you know, I would go with the wife and say like, "How's this? How does this make my face look? What does this look like?" You know, I I don't. I hate shopping. I hate trying things on. I hate all that stuff. I don't know. I don't know what what's like. They're Ray Bans. Ray Bans were the frames fit perfectly on my face. Anyway, anyway, anyway finally found some frames and I was like okay th these are this is my choice this is my new face now let it make it happen and uh, he's like cool cool we just have to have um, we gotta have the manager 
uh, so I was like, I do not want to talk to her. I don't want. I don't want anything to do with her. If we, and she's like, no. He's like, I get it. I get it. She's horrible. She's a bad person. I'm like, oh, okay, if you say so. And um, but he, he was like, but she's she's you know she's a general manager here. She has to sign off. Blah blah blah. All this stuff. It's like cool. That's fine. I don't want to talk to her though. She better not call me. She better not say anything. She's like, no. He's like, no. I, she won't. He's like, she's mean to me. I don't want her. She scared me. So uh, we'll see how they we'll see how that goes. We'll see how long it takes to get my new fucking frames. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Not really happy with it, but of course I was like, let me just get the most expensive frames that they have in this. I know this is like a cheap. Uh, they have cheap inventory, whatever. I think that's their thing, you know. But I was like, if they're if they're if I already paid my money, and they're this is them trying to make it up to me, I'll just get the most expensive ones. So I got some Swiss frames, and we'll see what's up. We'll see what's up. But, uh, yeah, dude, sometimes a Karen's got a Karen, got a Karen, dude. Same thing happened. Like, I had to, I'd left a one-star review for my doctor's office, which reminds me, I still need to make it. I, I got to find a new doctor. Is there a doctor out there taking new patients? I'm diabetic. And, uh Yeah. So, yeah, I left a one-star review uh, on Google about my doctor because they weren't, re they weren't returning my phone calls. They weren't uh, maybe listening to my messages. They weren't submitting my prescriptions. They weren't doing a lot of stuff. And I was like, dude, what is that? They, they were making me, like, do follow-ups, like, once, uh, once, every, once a week. And I had to pay out of pocket, you know, and I was like, well, follow up for what? And then they would cancel. My doctor wouldn't show up. I would have to talk to some. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff. They're just, they're really bad. It's not working out. The only, the only good thing is that it's close to my apartment. That's the only thing I like about this place. You know, it's close to my apartment. That's the only selling point right now. They gave me diabetes and they gave me low T. It's nothing but bad news at this place. That's it. Nothing but bad news. So, uh, but I'm too lazy to find another doctor, blah, 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 blah. But I, I left a review. I was like, they, they don't return calls. They don't order my prescriptions. They don't, you know, they, they don't answer the questions. They don't run the proper test, blah, 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 blah. The next day, the next day, I get a call from my uh, nurse practitioner. She's like, hey, we haven't forgot about you, um, which they have since then. I have not talked to her since. I'm still waiting. It doesn't matter. But all I'm saying is that, like, dude, take advantage of the Google reviews. Take advantage of the Yelp reviews. I thought it was a dumb idea. I was like, don't waste your time, dude. Don't put that negative stuff out there. But, hey, got to put it somewhere. If you don't have a podcast where you, you voice your complaints and observations about the world around you, about how people mistreat you, how people mess up your Ray-Ban, your favorite Ray-Ban glass frames, or how about how they don't order your testosterone medication or whatever. Let them know about it, man. Tell somebody. Make a deal about it. Be a Karen. Be a Karen. You know, sometimes, just not all the time. Just don't do it all the time, man. Don't get Karen. Don't get carried away. Don't get Karen away. I don't know. We're just we're riffing here. It's all good. But uh yeah, dude. So here we go. Here we go. Did the uh ha my half hour did my half and I know some of you think like that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Uh but but it but it is. It is. Uh, it is to me. I got to close out the... Uh, and Thank you for everybody that came out. If you came out to the show, I had friends. I had family out there. I had we. It was a packed house in the front room. Packed that house uh, in the front room. Uh, I was told by the, the management there that it was the best-selling uh, homegrown showcase. Possibly. I was like, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, it was a fire lineup, man. It was a fire lineup. We had Davey Jackson was hosting. Fucking hilarious. Uh, Jacob Flores kicked it off. 
you know, Scott Ramos did his thing. Edward Hernandez. Edward, I had to follow Edward Hernandez. He's a fucking killer, dude. He's been doing this a while. He's good at his shit. He knows what he's doing up there. And he fucking, everybody had a fucking fire fucking time, dude. And, uh, and then it was, and then it was me. Now, I hadn't gone, I hadn't been on stage since the Saturday before. Um, I had a show in, in Austin at Casa Moreno's. That was the last time I've been on stage. I didn't get to work out any of the stuff. I didn't go to any of the mics because I didn't want to go out, catch the 2020 thing and have to cancel on my half hour closing showcase spot. You know, didn't want to chance it. You know, cases are rising. People are getting it. People are getting, you know, having to cancel things. I didn't want to cancel stuff. I didn't want to have to cancel stuff. You know, so I was just like, let me just let me just stay in home. Let me just stay inside, not test it. Uh, we didn't do a, a Duderman Homie Bro podcast this past Monday because because so um, yeah, dude, I didn't get a chance to work out of anything. I talked to myself a lot. I ran through the stuff. I did everything I could to prepare but go to Mike's. And I don't like doing that. I don't like taking any time off because uh, it, uh, it, hurt, it hurts my momentum. I get rusty. You know, got to stay ready. Got to stay prepared. Got to gotta be out there. Got to test it out. Got to try things out. You know, bye. But, uh, so yeah, man, the pressure was building. Pressure was building. Again. David Jackson, Jacob Flores, Scott Ramos, Edward Hernandez, killer crowd, packed out crowd, you know, and then, uh, and then I was having like a little, little bit of trouble. I was going to, I was going to record it, you know, but I was stressing myself out, just setting up the cameras and all that stuff. And I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to record it. Let me just get the, the a clean audio. I was going to record it on my zoom H six. Uh, sponsor the podcast Zoom 8, 6 Zoom um, So I was getting re- I was checking all the levels and stuff And then getting ready to re- record And then see this And it says uh, No SD card I fucking forgot the SD card So I was like Fuck dude I can't record it I can't I, I can't have no video I can't have no clean audio This is fucking going great This is fucking going great And uh so I was just like, cool, man. Cool. Let's just, let's just not worry about it. Let's just have a good time. Fuck the footage. Let's just go for it. And so I'm in the back and I'm trying to like, trying to get myself all, you know, ready. Get the blood pumping, you know, going through my set, trying to figure stuff out, you know, and then. The crowd, the crowd was just good from the get go. Good from the get go, you know. And uh, yeah, dude. And I was kind of trying not to pay attention to the the people before me, you know. Just in my own head, going on my own stuff, blah 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 blah. But of course, I I could not help but watch uh, Edwards set. He was on right before me. I didn't want to, you know. I just want to see what he was doing, so I didn't do any of that same stuff. No repeat material, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, killing, dude. No pressure. No pressure. And, uh, finally, D- David's about to bring it up. He's like, you ready for your headliner tonight? I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm not the headliner, I'm just the closer. He's like, are you ready for your headliner tonight? I need to hear you get loud for your headliner for the homegrown showcase. I was like, ah, I'm just a closer. <laughs> and brings me up and I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Let's go. And it was a fun time, dude. I had a really good time. It was a slow, slow start, you know. And I joked about like how everybody, everybody on the set, uh, everybody on the show just killed I was like, so you know what? You already got your money's worth. Uh, so let's lower your 
lower your expectations. You know, you already got the show. You already ate. You already got your drinks. You just bring it, uh, bring it down a little bit. You know, and uh, yeah, dude. Obviously, I was I was nervous. My my first time on stage in four days, five days. Uh, doing a half hour. You know, so I came out. I was like, bang, 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 and then I was like, fuck, I have thirty minutes. <laughs> How about you slow it down, just a tad, you know, and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, because usually when I go up, I'm just like bang, 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 bang. You know, but that's all, those those are five minute sets, those are ten minute sets, those are uh, fifteen minute sets. You know, I uh, I'm trying to cover a lot of ground in a little bit of time. This night was different. This night was reverse. I was trying to cover as much, cover as much time uh, with the, all 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 the good stuff. You know, and. Uh, but yeah, it was it was fun, dude. I felt good. I was happy with myself. Uh, Could have ended a little bit strong, a little bit strong. Could have got into my last bit a little bit stronger, you know. Uh, I did stutter a little bit, kind of messed up a word here or there, you know. Uh, made some nonsense words, where uh, you know that's where I combine two different words to make one, you know, because. You know, I was in in a rush, I guess. I hate when I do that. I really hate when I do that because, yeah, I know what I mean, but nobody knows what I mean. What is, I I have no examples. What would a good example be? Uh, Spaghetti and balls or something like that. I don't know. It only happened, like, it's not planned out. It's not my gimmick, but I do it a lot of times where I, like, make up words because I'm combining two or three words at the same time. Because my my mouth works a little bit slower than my brain, and then nothing makes sense. Anyway, had a couple of those, had a couple of few of those, had some stutters, um, had some jokes that just that you know maybe I rushed it too much. You know, it it wasn't a hundred percent, but it was still a fucking good show very proud of myself very proud of myself very thankful for the people that came out i had family out there and i i I feel bad i feel bad because i don't i don't see my family all that much because i am doing comedy doing something in comedy you know or if i'm not doing something i just need like i just need a time out from everything I need to recharge the batteries, you know. So it was nice. I, my 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 aunt was there, my uncle was there, my sister was there, my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law's family, which is like family to me too. I've known them like a big chunk of my life. They're like family. They are family, you know. Big supporters, dude. That was that was great. I had uh, some comic friends out there, and then uh, people were just there for the show. I'm not saying everybody was there to see me, but people were just there to see the show. But uh, it was a, it was a good crowd. It was a full crowd. It was uh, uh, a comedy crowd. You know, I got the I got a you know good set. That was a good set from the managers. That was nice, uh, and then I, you know, uh, my buddy, my buddy Jacob posted a, p- a picture and got a bunch of lines, but I got a bunch of like go, go get them, go get them, you know. I man, I I appreciate all the support, dude. It's it's amazing, it's amazing, dude. I feel there's a lot of times, there's a lot of times where I feel like comedy is a lonely thing. Doing doing comedy is a very lonely thing. And sometimes I, I forget that people people got my back, dude. That people actually give a shit. I forget about that a lot, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had a lot of people reach out before the show. So I'm sorry I can't be there. Have a good show, which is fine. You know, a lot of people afterwards, man, like, heard it went well. Proud of you. 
that's nice. You know, so I don't know, man. I, I, I don't, uh, I, that's all I was really focused on for a while. Uh, well, not, not online. I, I kind of find out just a couple weeks notice. And it was a it was a big thing. It was a big thing, and it 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 couldn't have gone. The night couldn't have been uh, any any better, you know. I was I was so stoked uh, to work with the comics, you know, that, that night. You know, everybody did good. It was a fucking great show, start to finish, and I got to finish it, and I felt uh, I felt like I did good. I felt like I did great. I felt like I did my fucking job, you know, so thank you, if you were there, uh, thank you very much, thank you, I love you, you're awesome, and uh, I appreciate the support, that was great, um, and uh, I mean, if any support, all support, any support is fucking thank you, you know, because although this is like doing comedy is a very lonely thing, you know, uh, people could still support you. People could still be on the team. People, people still uh, got your back. You know, you're lonely, but you're not alone uh, in in comedy. If that makes sense, yeah, dude. It's cool, man. Comedy is good. I'm good. I'm feeling good. And uh, other than my glasses and uh my doctor situation um everything else is good <laughs> yeah so thank you very much for listening uh, and again support the Duderman man homie bro podcast we will get back to the regular uh, schedule programming or the regular regular schedule uh recording uh on that we are doing uh the uh cutting it up at the shop comedy show july 16th I will be on that. That's hosted by Jacob Flores, Scott Ramos. I will be on that. I think David Jackson's on that. Zach Dixon is on that. And uh, the flyer's on my social media. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, Babacoacore.com for all the booking information. Or Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, OnlyFans, at your homie Pat. And uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing good. Um, I hope you're doing good. All right. I'll check back with you next week. Uh, Thanks for listening.